I'll be right I back. Wish... Yeah. I do wish we had gotten a, a, the original 3D Mario for the DS. Yeah, you just got like 60, uh, 64 DS in, right? Yep. I still feel like that game should have been, like, I feel like they should have saved to the remaking the 64, because the, that, that, the old DS model was, like, not really built for that kind of game. Had a 3D system, and they had to show a tech demo. Yeah, I mean, six, to be fair, 64 DS is one of the most um, impressive games on the system, like, visually, so it, it definitely is impressive. Even if I personally prefer the original, um, the, how the original game looks in terms of just, uh, I don't know, artistic design, I guess? I don't know. I kind of like how weird the original was. The game is gross. <laughs> oh god. Many a nightmares. With that game. Oh, is this the this is the level that has one of those really annoying, uh, like, destroy all the rubbish, state uh, missions, I think. Oh, is this where the Guillermo's debut? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. I'm, I'm hilarious. Uh, I thought 64 DS was fine for what it was, but it, Nintendo making a 3D Mario game that was deliberately designed for the DS's architecture would probably would have been interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would have. I, I think that would have been a lot better because you know with 64 DS, it they're like you can tell that the game really struggles in a lot of, a lot of areas in terms of just trying to make that kind of um, control system w work on a, on a D-pad. And um, it... I, I, they made it work fine enough, I guess, but I feel like if they just made a... a um, new 3D Mario for the DS, it would have been a lot smoother. Yeah, this is a cool level. I like Battle Rock, Battle, uh, Battle Rock quite a bit. And the uh, theme's definitely one of my favorites. I think what makes the what makes the Galaxy games work so well is the or oh, one of the reasons they work so well is the fact that uh, even though it has the whole like you get a star and you boot, get booted out of the level. It every star basically feels like a new level in and of itself, so it never really gets annoying like it could do in like 64 and to a lesser extent Sunshine. Um, I think that's probably del possibly del possibly I say likely deliberate on Nintendo's part. They yeah. kind of gradually began to stratify the levels of each 3D game like. 64 levels Sorry, of something. Yep. The levels of Mario. Uh, oh, I missed the whole of the first uh, star of the Battle Rock. Well, we have to do this again. We have to find Luigi, so it'll be fine. Yeah, what are you saying? The levels of Mario 64 were closer to proper, I say, with air quotes, <laughs> proper sandboxes. Like yeah. Sunshine and Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2 were closer to, like, kind of bite-sized portions. Yeah, Sunshine had the uh, benefit of like every episode like changing the level up a little bit. And then these two games like flat out just gives you different level design in every star. So it doesn't really feel like egregious that you're being booted back to uh, the level select. It's especially great in the uh, Galaxy 2 though because there's there's um there's a lot more levels in that game, but there's also a lot less stars in each world, so you get even more variety going on in, in that game, which I like. Whee! 
Although, um, I, I guess this game does have the benefit of, like, since there's every main level has three stars, it does have the benefit of making each world, um, like, use its mechanics to its, mo like, to its, to the fullest. You don't really have a, a level that, um, is, like, too short or whatever, where, like, you feel they could have done more of it, which admittedly is a problem I do have in some Galaxy 2 levels. Not a lot of them, but there are some instances where I feel like there could have been more done. But I'll talk more about that when we, when we actually play that game. Oh, good. <laughs> no! <laughs> Yeah, it can actually, when you have to do stuff like this, it can actually be pretty tricky because it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world to run around and destroy stuff and collect the star bits at the same time. <laughs> you have to do a bit of, there's a bit of multitasking going on and also the, uh, uh, cursor is getting desynced. I mean, I should have killed the Luma. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, actually, um, this is a good. Uh, this should be a good uh, time to test this. Think you? Oh, okay. I honestly thought that was a lot um, more difficult than it actually was. Okay, um, but this is a good thing to test. So I think once you feed a hungry Luma, they're fed forever. So once we play the stage again for the secret star, we just have to go back here and the launch star will just be there for us. So I think though I could be wrong, but again that's 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 why this is a good this is a good time to test that. And more pool star shenanigans. Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm getting getting war flashbacks to the one of the comet missions. Mm. <laughs> oh jeez. Can I just I can just go through that. Yeah, I just love the sense of scale as well. I guess that's um a no brainer when with a space adventure, but still. Eh. Space. It's really big. <laughs> yeah. And Jason, you were asking about that line earlier from Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Uh, is, is he here? I think he is. I'm here. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Yeah, what you were saying about Ratchet and Clank? That's where the space, it's really big line comes from. Is it the first game? Uh, hmm. No, it's from one of the future games. Oh, okay. That, that's why I wouldn't. Rec I didn't recognize it. Okay, let's see if I can do this. I know it's possible to hit both uh, parts of the of the ice the Luma's stuck in in one, but it's like extremely precise. Let's see if I can do it. Should we just let the the bombs explode on impact? Yeah, they take like ten seconds, I think. No, that's the wrong button. <laughs> Come on, please edit on the um, Oh, nice! Oh, oops. Okay. <laughs> I think if you mash the button, you can just spin and get there immediately, but... Yeah, don't I don't... Edit Tom yeah. screams in Tonto Mario whenever he gets launched. <laughs> I would do that if I remembered to, to edit, edit, edit that in. So this uh, weird malarkey going on here. There's like a um, precursor to what we're gonna see in the Hungry Luma stage. How can it not supposed to do that? <laughs> All right. 
No, I, I, you don't hit one oh, shot with this one, I think. <laughs> I keep on pressing B. I'm you. Good. Ah! Nice. Yeah, they get really like some of the green stars in Galaxy Two are like ridiculous, like shots. Okay, so what stage was the stage number was that? Was that two? Or was that three? Ooh. Two. Okay. Hey, right, how much time? How much more time do you have now? Thirty-six. So oh, I have to prepare for the move. So it's thirty. Thirty minutes. Okay. Should be able to at least finish the fountain. Yeah, I don't know when we should t start talking about the uh, development for this game, but it is um, an interesting subject. I know nothing about it. Yeah, I feel like... I guess uh, that might be a good discussion to go over like next time. There's quite a lot to talk about there. I know a Beta 64 made like an hour long video about it, I think, so... I definitely recommend checking that out at some point if you have the time. So I assume you guys know about how the, there was going to be a Mario 64 too, and then there was like Super Mario 128 and all this. Yes. 128, right. Yes. Um, yeah. So that would definitely be um, discussed at some point. Yeah. I'll try and I'll probably like look into like more of the specific details just so I don't get stuff wrong. But um, yeah. The only development of trivia I really know is that Rosalina was apparently meant to be Peach's sister originally. Yeah, and like I. She went through like quite a num a number of them um, different designs. Oh come on. Yeah, 2D section. Yeah, I don't know how Often this game does it, but it does have like occasional 2D sections, which is which is nice. I think there was like one in the uh, Good Air Galaxy as well. Hmm. So. Let's change up the gameplay a little bit. Yeah, I think. Yeah. What? What? May what definitely makes the Galaxy games, like, really fun as well is the fact that um, you are pretty much constantly doing something new. It, it It's um, very rarely a dull moment, moment with these two games, and I feel like the the uh, pacing is just, just really well done. I don't think it's... Why as a mm. uh, like 3D Land and World are fine for what they are, but I, I feel like those games don't do it nearly as well. I mean, they're going for different things. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I I think they're fine as being like a more condensed version of the Galaxy formula. You know. I'm trying- I, I don't want to talk too much about, like, the other games. You gotta love that spectacle. <laughs> And 
this is the boss that had like a completely di completely different design as well in the uh, early versions. Mm. Actually, it might it might have been this guy that was like one th that might have been the third boss in the demo. Is the Mario Striker boss? Basically, yeah, he kind of has that um, mm. design. I was talking more about the electrified fences. Oh, that too, yeah. So what happens if you get a, a health mushroom while you already have full health? Do you just get like an extra life? Yeah, I think you just get a one up. Okay, so... I don't remember that the first garbage uh, mission being uh, too bad, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, there's also a comet here, right? Yeah, so I don't, I don't exactly know how the comets work in this game. I, I think it's like just they just kind of randomly show up. I thought it feels like the very, at the very least. Yeah, I know. In the yeah, Galaxy Two, is a little bit more controlled because you have um you at least know that um comets won't appear for a level until you get the uh comet com uh, comet medals for some right. stage and then they'll just it well it doesn't necessarily mean they'll show up immediately it just means they'll they have a chance to show up now um and yeah that was a complete mess but cool <laughs> Eh. All right, let's see. If, let's see if I was correct. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice. I probably could use the uh, extra star bits though. So let me just kill some of these chain chomps. <laughs> yeah, okay. How come chain chomps when they're on the chain are crazy, but the ones without the chain are just kind of rolling them out? That's a good question. Yeah. The, yeah, the chain chomps are very t uh, tame. Uh, maybe cringes. we've been. Maybe we've had it all wrong. Maybe, maybe they just. Yeah. Maybe they just need to be let free. Yeah, maybe it's just a case of like the ones on chains are so aggressive because they're like chained up. That, I mean, that would make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, I don't like this one. Yeah. Okay. I've already messed up. <laughs> um. So the um. The best way to do this, I found, is aim for the coins. Um, that's basically, like, your best, um, point of reference for this. And also, bombs take, like, 10 seconds to blow up, so if you pick up a bomb when it's, like, 9 seconds remaining, you, you've already lost. <laughs> yeah, this one isn't too bad, but the second one, which is, like, in the last, um, Dome, I think, is a living hell. <laughs> I'm so glad these assholes are timing you with for doing their chores. Also, I ju <laughs> speaking of speaking of this, um, I you gotta find find out how like weird and just. I mean, this is just game logic, I guess. But you made um you <laughs> you made a Luma turn into a planet where. There's just rubbish on it, and a uh, a gear mode just is just there complaining about it. It's just they huh. just exist to um <laughs> they just immediately exist, and it's just like oh great, this rubbish sucks. Like so just creating like this whole life, so weird. The created pollution apparently. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Don't think that's yeah. too hard. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. I actually remember this stage being uh, pretty difficult. I, I tend to die here a lot. <laughs> It's like the first st stage in the game that's, um... I wouldn't necessarily call it a difficulty spike, but it's definitely, um, a part, part of the game where the... it starts to pick up a bit. Yeah, I remember this. Oh, this is, this is layout looks like a cluster frenzy. Yeah, um, it's also... this is the best stage... I will say this though, this is the best stage to, um, grind for star bits. Because you, you can just like grab a bunch of star bits, kill yourself and just just grab more. And uh, you can just keep doing that for a while. I think there is a, a cap though. Good. I think there is a cap to how many star bits you can hold in a, in a level though. You can't just get like 5,000 and then leave. I, I think it's just like 999 or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think that was the first death. In this playthrough. I think that was the first death. <laughs> Hopefully I don't die too much here, but we'll see. So you have to, you have to aim very precisely, and it's not always the easiest when you have all this stuff going on. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely say that this is um, the first um, stage of the game that um, is actually pretty pretty tough. Because I wouldn't say the levels we've been playing have been brain dead, but they've been fairly easy for the most part. We have to come up with a better term than brain dead. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really know what else to call it though. Um, cake walk. Cake. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. It's like, there we go. I do. I will say this. I I. I do like that the game does uh, make it very easy to get one up because it just kind of eliminates the. Uh, what is it? The not tedium, but well, I guess that's one way to put it. But just the idea of just uh, getting getting a game over and just wasting time on menus and getting back to the game. So hmm. I feel, after, yeah. After a certain point, lives in Mario just kind of became a formality. Pretty much. That's why Odyssey just got rid of them entirely. <laughs> like I, yeah, I I feel. I don't necessarily think the having more lives necessarily equates to an easier game. It's more it's more like the game's just not wasting your time as much, if that makes sense. Mm. Cause you like what is it? You have um like I mean Rare had uh, the idea to just get rid of lives as um early as a Tui. Or not not even that, like DK sixty four didn't have lives. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, some games, uh, it's worth, I don't know how I didn't get it there. <laughs> I don't, some games it's worth uh, keeping that stuff, but for the most part, it's just get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I don't know if there's a checkpoint in this level either. No! Okay, cool. <laughs> Cool. All right, and I think. Oh, it's something. Okay, one thing you should know is that when you were, uh, when Mario goes back to like this area of the observatory, usually it means that. Oh hi. Um, <laughs> usually it means that. Oh hi, Nino Kuni. <laughs> it means that um, like something will happen or. Okay, I think it. I think in this case it's just the fact that I was playing a Hungry Luma stage. Alright, so is it is it boozer time? I think. Yeah boy. Uh besides this uh comment, yes. Whoa. Ah, uh, yes, far reactor. Yes. And this is, um... Hmm. I wanna say... I'm, I don't know if this is my favorite rendition of the, like, Bowser's Road theme, but it's, it's definitely... It's definitely up there. 
it... Mm. My favorite overall might be the one in the Olympics games. Hmm. But yeah. Also, I like the little, like, pipe that you go in here. Yeah, the, I really like the uh, Bowser levels in this game. They um, do a lot of crazy stuff with the gravity uh, gimmick. And um, just fun little obstacle courses. Like, they were pretty much what like they were in uh, 64. Just with the whole gravity stuff that this game introduces, which just makes them more dynamic and interesting. It's a very colorful Bowser level. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you how you guys feel about the uh, Galaxy 2 version of the Bowser Bowser's Road theme, but I I don't think it works as well. I think what makes me enjoy the the theme for 64 and Galaxy 1, this game specifically, is the fact that it feels very foreboding. It's, it's not over the top, and it it's a nice build up to the Bowser fight. Whereas I feel I feel like the one in Galaxy 2. While it sounds nice, it kind of misses the point. I feel like it's too overly epic for the sake of it. Um, it's trying too hard. Yeah, I, I feel. Yeah, I can make that joke about galaxies OST in general. Uh, I I feel like it. I feel like it works. Um, in for like what it's trying to do though. I, I feel like with the Bowser Bowser theme here, it just it makes more sense for it to be like a foreboding theme and not just in your face. Kind of, kind of deal. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in thinking that. It's just I something know, I thought I of. I haven't played either of these games in over a decade. It's I'm, I can't remember. I do not remember much of Gal the Galaxy games OST for whatever reason. Is it me or is Bowser's model look kind of burnt? <laughs> <laughs> he got no, what? <laughs> He's burnt. Burnt. He got he he were, got sent into uh, lava too many times. Oh, uh, just... no, well, I mean, and it's not as burnt as like the models of the click in like uh, double dash at least. He he just he's just been sunbathing. It's fine. Um, uh, does anyone want to do cool a voice? Enough. Oh gosh. Before you do that, before you do that, I like how his second left wristband is clipping through his arm. <laughs> Good. Early Wii game. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, I, just, I cannot be asked. Um, <laughs> you want me to do it then? Fine. <laughs> uh, uh, you want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. You finally made it. No! <laughs> just in time for me to stomp you into space bits. Bro. Yeah, so uh, this is my... Th these are my sec second favorite Bowser bosses in the series. Um, these, I like how these feel like just flat, like straight up duels. Um, you, you're not, well, you're still using the environment to your advantage, like in 64 and Sunshine, but it's, I feel like it, the bosses in this game feel more like you're actually, like, fighting Bowser more head on than, than those games. And, um, what's, your, what's, your fav what's your favorite, Odysseys? Yeah, Odyssey. I feel like Odysseys is, uh, very, uh, very well, uh, put together. Mm. It's also... A rare instance where, like, the Bowser bosses are actually kind of difficult. Well, not super difficult, but they're more difficult than they tend to be in the, these games. He actually puts, he actually puts up a fight. Yeah. I, I will say, I don't dislike the ones in Galaxy 2, but the... I feel like it's another one of those cases where the, um, they try to make it not overly epic, but... It's um, a case of like overusing the big Bowser kind of idea where they feel like making Bowser super massive makes him more intimidating and interesting, and it just doesn't. <laughs> also, you gotta love that uh, choir. Yeah. Speen! I do like Bowser's final theme in Galaxy 2, though. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Foolish Mario, my plan is too far along now. You really think you could stop me? 
<laughs> just imagine. I, can't, I, I just. <laughs> I'm just imagining Bowser like doing it in in that tone. Just like he just gives up. He's like, ha 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 like that. The cat <laughs> Mario. The cat <laughs> Mario face. What am I saying? Mario was just facing Bowser, and I'm sorry, I'm just imagining him. Having, ugh, the love of Peach. <laughs> We only saw Mario's back during that convo, but I'm just imagining Mario just having like a a neutral expression. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm or he's like giving that yeah. thing kind of like face that he does to Bowser Jr. in um uh, Bowser's Fury. <laughs> okay. I'm not getting the grand stuff for a second because I just want to point this out. Um, there's a screenshots of this game where you see um like Bowser fighting Mario or like on this platform. So part of me wonders if the if the Bowser fights were gonna be slightly different before they finalized it, but who knows. Oh, that was easy! Yeah. I mean, it's a Bowser fight, so they don't tend to be that difficult. I love how he just got away with dark magic. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 that's kind of, that's at least, that tracks actually Bowser's supposed to be a magician, but... Yeah, they don't do that that often in the series, but he does know dark magic, it's just... Uh, mainly in the like the main games, it's not really um, shown much. Like Peach is supposed to have some level of magic as well. They like outside like Mario RPG and I guess by extension Smash, they don't really play oh, yeah. with it that much. Yeah, I mean in Smash. Oh, the kid, oh, the next. Sorry, you finish. No, I was just gonna say in in Smash, Bowser's just a hulking beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sam Sakurai oh. imagines him apparently. Oh. Which galaxy? Wait, wait, what kind of? Which one was that? Was that a Daredevil? Yep. Guess we might as well get that done now. Then I should probably be enough to call it. Yeah, we're um, getting uh, close to the time when um, was it Xavier? Xavier, <laughs> when Scrappy needs to go. So, Xavier, get out of here. <laughs> Save your special one, Mario. She has a name, Rosalina. No. <laughs> uh, uh, oh right, yeah, sorry. I, I should. Go, sorry, go go save Daisy. I should also <laughs> show this off because, um, get the little barrier. I think if she... She can't even... They won't even... They will never let her take the piss. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember when... Oh, actually, no, I do remember. I was gonna say I don't remember when, when Luigi shows up, but never mind. Luigi next. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, I was gonna say, yeah. He, um, shows up in Ghostly Galaxy, I wanna say. Yeah, and that yeah. should be in the next area. Yeah. Also, the, also, you may have been hearing that the Comet Observatory's music has livened up. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about these two games. Like, the hub world, the, the theme changes as you, like, get more stars and stuff. I did not know that. Yeah, there's, like, I don't know how many versions there are, but there's there's a decent amount. So, Daredevil comics are, or comets are, uh, don't get hit at all. Yeah, most of them are, like, fight, the, like, fight a boss again. Um, so... And then there's that one we talked about earlier. Yeah, which I'm pretty sure is the only Daredevil run that's just a regular stage, but I could be wrong. I don't know... I I don't remember, like, um, what... If there's any, like, full run stages in Galaxy 2, though. I don't remember the Daredevil comments in that game. Um, is my screen messed up, or is Mario green? Uh... I don't... Well, I mean... Lighting. Yeah, there's a little, like, tint to it. Yeah, I do like how the comets have, like, a little, um, like, border, I guess. So this is... Yeah, stuff like this... I think this just goes without saying with any game, but just... Not being able to, like, take any, like, damage at all just... Makes you a lot more tense. Yeah, you've got the endurance of... Wait, what was I gonna say? You all remember the episode of Ed and Eddie where Jimmy got his foot in a cast when a pose line hit him? No? <laughs> hmm. I don't remember that. Was a close line, not close line, a close pin. It, like, it hit his foot and he just had a... Just started freaking out. Oh. I guess... Yeah, sure. Um, we might as well read these as they um, appear. Um, uh, while we're 
<laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> really? Woohoo! Come and read it, Rosalina! Gosh, I. Going to read out. Holy effing crap! <laughs> I'm not going to read Rosalina. <laughs> oh my god. Woohoo! I'm going to read Rosalina's diary without her consent. <laughs> I like how he just gave up. <laughs> Um, who wants I've, to? I've been, who, who wants to be the one to uh, read it? Uh, you read can do it, it since we've been doing all the reading. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah, read it in Rosalina's disaffected voice too. No. Mario, your mouth. No. Anytime she actually speaks is just freaky. Let us begin. Hi everyone, welcome to an episode of Storytime with Scrappy and Friends. This is, <laughs> this is a very special episode. Yes. Our story begins a very, very, very... Good. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted space spaceship holding a small star child. He had the crown on as a child, like... Oh, this is... Just a... This is just, like, story time. Do you... Do you... Does anyone want to do, like, voices? Okay. What's your name? Are you lost? I sound like Umi now. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Who, who knew that a new, a new chapter of, um, Till We Make Our Ascent already came out? Uh, God. No, no one's gonna get this if you don't watch story time. Oh, uh, God. The, the girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet," said the Star Child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you," the little girl pr promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl so sighed and said to Luma, You're here looking much longer. I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And, and this is how the search for the Celestial Mother began. Up and left her family. Oh, we've already got the second chapter, okay. I guess it's- I think it's, it's based- ba it, 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 I'm guessing it's based on the stars you have? Yeah, I think it's based on how many stars you have, not necessarily how, f how many, like, grand stars you have. Um, days passed with no sight of the comet, or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. And no one was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl, above the rumble of her belly. <laughs> Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... <laughs> Face! <laughs> No space helmet? Oh yeah, they could just breathe- Mario characters can just breathe in space, I guess, it's fine. <laughs> you know, Koizumi put a lot of work into this, I'm just pissing all over it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like that- I guess we're just mentioned this, mentioning this now, but uh, Koizumi base- um, This is basically like a random side project um, that he put into the game. He did this on the side and didn't really tell anyone about it. And then, like, it was, uh, it, it's just a nice little, like, bonus thing. Like, they didn't really need to do this, but uh, it's nice side content to get, like, actual backstory for Rosalina. And, um, like, how the Comet Observatory came to be and all that, and it's just nice. <laughs> I like it. Forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine," said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. 
Luma continued to laugh, and the girl continue couldn't help but join in. Wait, the Luma have Lumas have mouths? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, Sorry. maybe that is why it, this looks so weird because you don't really, you don't usually see Lumas with mouths. All right, maybe just a nibble. Ah. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Yeah, that's where, that's where, I think we were talking about that earlier, but yeah, that's where the whole star bits tasting like honey thing comes from. I wonder if that's something that Karizumi just made up, <laughs> or like they always wanted to like make that a thing. That should do it for today. Yes. So, um, we, do we have, like, proper confirmation that her home planet is, like, Mushroom World, or is that just... I don't know. I, I think it's supposed to be, um, like, the whole, like, the regular Mushroom Planet, or, like, where Mario's from, but I don't know if that's confirmed. But, yeah, I think... No, I was just gonna... Give, yeah, okay. I don't think you said really anything during that, Jason. What do you? What is your take on the whole storybook thing? I I, I, I like you just giving like an interesting backstory for um. Uh, well, it's pretty obvious who it's for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just interesting giving like a little backstory to Rosalina. Yeah, it's a uh, probably the most backstory like any of these characters really have. <laughs> yeah. So I was being quiet nice. because I was doing something and I didn't want to interrupt the story time. Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, uh, next time we'll go to the kitchen world and uh, save save Ouija and um, other stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh, I I think I remember where, like most of the uh, most of the levels or like where they are, but we shall see. And um, yeah, I got nothing else. <laughs> Making uh, good good progress so far, so hopefully we can keep this up. And uh, I'll just feed this one Luma for no reason, and then we'll stop there, I guess. <laughs> See you guys next time. Very well.